So tonight we're starting, I'm starting with, this series is called The Core. And the next seven weeks after this, we have our core values broken up and you are gonna be so encouraged and so blessed. But let me just say this before I go into just the basic intro message tonight. Is that although these might be Impact 7's core values, if you grab a hold of them in your life, you will succeed. If you grab a hold of them and say, I'm gonna live this out as a, as a man or woman of God, you will see transformation, you will see change, you will see a turnaround, amen? But I wanna get started, I want you to turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four through nine. And I think I have it on PowerPoint as well. It says this, listen, O Israel, the Lord our, is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord your God. Come on, how many of you know this one? With all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again. Let's say that again. Come on. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home. And when you are on the road, and when you're going to bed, and when you are getting up, tie them to your hand and wear them around your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. You know, when I think of the core of who we are, this scripture really brings it all together, which it says that God is our center, that everything in our life, our heart, our mind, our soul, every part is God's. See, but we live in a society at times that pieces are God's. We, we might give them part of this or part of that, but God is asking us to be what? Wholehearted. And when we really get to the core of those things and those questions, it really is an eye-opener for many of us. But what I love here and what we're going to do the next seven weeks, it says repeat it again and again. How many of you guys get, the, get stuff the first time? Not me. <laughs> I usually have to hear it again and again. Some of you are like, you know, you, you memorize things really quickly. I was working with my daughter today before my life group, and she was working on her multiplication, and I just said, come on, baby, repetition. You just got to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. And after we were doing it for an hour, she started remembering more and more. And so I want to encourage you that we're not going to get it right away, but if you can stay committed, if you can stay faithful, it's going to begin to sink in. See, and I love here where it says... Talk about it at home. Talk about it on the road. That means on your way to work. It means think about it when you're going to bed and when you're waking up. If you can take every week, we're going to talk about one core value. If you can just say in that week, I'm going to focus on building my life around that core value, I'm telling you what, there's going to be transformation. I want to read you this quote from this lady named Marlene Chisholm, and she said this. She's talking to business people, and it, she says, as a supervisor or mid-level ma manager, she's talking to people that work in that setting in gl a global company. She goes, you may not have the power to shape the entire culture. See, that's what really our heart is, is to shape culture, to shape the world. She says, but you do have the power to shape culture in your department, local office, or workplace. It is not a question of whether or not you shape culture, but whether you shape culture consistently or inconsistently, or consciously or unconsciously. The way you speak, the language you use, and the behaviors you exhibit influence the culture whether you're aware of it or not. See, it starts with the bare necessities. It starts with the essentials, and that's what we're starting with tonight. So again, I'm gonna reiterate a few things. Are you guys with me tonight? So what is our mission? And you can read it on the banners next to us. It's reaching the world through impacting the seven cultural spheres with the power and truth of the gospel. It's a big mission. It's big. When God gave it to me, I said, God, this is a little bit too big. God, this is a little bit beyond me. I don't really get it. I don't really know all these areas. You know, I'm not familiar with government so much. I'm not so familiar with arts and entertainment. But the Lord says, you know, you got to dream bigger. It's like, go home. Come on. God is a big God, and he wants you to speak life and speak big things. But our purpose, how many of you can maybe say it? I, I repeat it almost every week. Our purpose is to equip, I'm going to give you, and Oh, 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 you guys aren't getting it. Okay, 
Okay, let's try it again. Come on, my own team. To equip and empower you to impact your world. Everybody, let's repeat this. I think we're going to have to do the repeat again and again and again and again and again. Okay, it's a really short sentence. But our purpose is to what? To equip and empower you to impact your world. When I say world, what does that mean? Does that mean the whole globe? Or does that mean your sphere of influence? Do we got the PowerPoint up there? We do, right? You guys are just going back and forth. Okay, good. You guys are flowing with me. Good. So I said this. Well, how do we reach our mission? By equipping you and empowering you. But how do we reach our purpose? By instilling the core values that become the heartbeat of our people. So I want you to throw up the core values up there. This is um, what we have prayed about, we've talked about, and this is a, really a desire of my heart. So if you guys can throw it up on the PowerPoint. Number one is intentional living. Number two is growth focus. Read it with me, guys. Come on. I'm feeling like I'm like, am I too far because I'm on the stage? See, Devin, I like being down there. They're more awake. I can see you guys. If you guys don't liven up, I'm going to come right down there with you. No, I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> Number three, say it with me, modeling integrity. Number four, team-centered. Number five, unwavering commitment. Number six, bold faith. Number seven, change agents. This is our core values of Impact 7. Why are, impact, why are core values so important? Because they support the vision. They shape culture and they reflect the heart of an organization or ministry. They are the essence of their identity. This is our identity. And see, we've been doing these services, but we don't, this Impact 7 isn't a service. Impact 7 is a heart to go beyond the four walls of the church. It's a heartbeat. It's these core values. Are we living intentional every day? Are we growth focused? Are you wanting to grow in every aspect of your life? Are we modeling integrity in church and outside of church? Hey, come on. You want to talk about be making an impact? That's making an impact. Team-centered, building teams, reaching out and starting impact groups. And it goes on and on. But you know, one thing we realize is before, that we can, before we can impact a mountain, before we can impact one of these areas, we need to start at the core. Everyone say the core. The core of who we are and what we believe. So tonight, I want to start with the core, the essentials, the basics, the fundamental places of where God wants to take us. And I'm going to relate it to your life tonight. So there are many different ways to define the core. As I'm researching, it was so interesting as I saw so many different definitions of the core. And I'm just going to give you four unique pictures of the core. Are you guys with me? I got some good things. There we go. The first one is what? The core is the center. Everyone say that with me again. Now say it like you're really excited about it. No, I just, the core is the center. I know. Come on. Thank you, Caitlin. I know. I feel like I have the core is the center. Okay. Let's try it again. Let's throw a little passion, a little humor, and a little accent in there. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Doesn't that feel way better when you actually like get excited about something, right? Okay. If my daughter was up here, my daughter Haven is all stoked because she, she has like, she's working on her English accent and she's like, mom, I'm really good, aren't I? And I'm like, you know, talk to your dad. He's the accent guy, as you guys all know from his preaching. But when you talk about the core, one of the definitions is the central or most important part of something is the core. And you know, Looking back, well, how many years has it been? I've been graduated. When I was in college, I left my home in Maui. I had been born and raised in Maui. I was involved in the church. I loved life. It was great. You know, I mean, I had many different seasons, but then I'm launching out to college. I'm going to California to Azusa Pacific University, right kind of in the middle. And, and, and excuse me, but it was really in the ghetto. People were like, don't walk outside because you could get shot. I was like, oh my gosh, what in, what in the world? And so I'm going to college and I remember as my parents are dropping me off, their, their, their place that we're staying was across this busy street. And it was like the last goodbye. And they sent me across the street. And it was like the most horrible, awful 
feeling. I mean, talk about being separated. And my parents, my, my sweet parents are standing there and they felt the same way. They were like, it was just horrible, like seeing you go. And I had to walk through like the junior and senior dorm area. And I'm like, what am I doing here, right? And through that year and that semester, it was such a hard year. I hurt my back. I was in pain all the time. I was in a dorm room that was supposed to fit two people. They stuffed three of us in there. It was this big, community bathrooms, need I go on, okay? <laughs> and, and in that time, I remember being at chapel, and they're singing this song, and I won't sing it because I'll spare you for that, but it's called Jesus Be the Center. And of course, I'm there, and I'm singing it, and then all of a sudden, my hands are like this, but in my brain, I'm going, what in the world is, does it mean, God, for you to be my center? Like, so I'm having this, like, but inside, I'm totally having this, like, thing with God. You know, anybody ever been there? You're worshiping, but you totally have something completely different going on in here. Some of you were doing it tonight, and it's okay. I get it. I was like thinking of what restaurant I'm going to go to after. No, I'm just joking. So I'm having this conversation with God. I go, Jesus, what does it mean you're my center? Because I felt like my life was just going crazy. I felt stressed. I felt overwhelmed. I felt lonely. I felt like, who am I? Like, I have all these friends, but I felt like I had no friends. Anybody ever been there before? You're around so many people. And then all of a sudden, I saw my life. The Lord showed me my life was like this ball of like craziness like this. And then all of a sudden, I, I see in this vision, God come in the center of that craziness. And all of it went, <sharp inhale> but the interesting thing is, is it was all still there. But he became the center and became my focus. And there was peace in the center. And yet all the craziness, all that static, all that moving around was all there, but it wasn't an issue anymore. Can I tell you when Jesus becomes your center, your circumstance might not change. It might still seem crazy, but when he becomes your core, he becomes the very essence of who you are. You can walk through any storm and have peace because he is your center. He is your core. He is who you are. And I got to tell you a fun fact. It really doesn't have anything to do with this point, but I told my husband, I'm like, I just got to tell him because it's so cool. So I'm researching the earth's core and it's a lot of information and I'm not big on science, but there's one thing that caught my eye is that part of the heat, there's different reasons why it's heated the way it is at the earth's core. And one of the first reasons that they said is there's a residual heat left from the earth's formation. Does that not freak you out? Like, it's amazing. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's still heat there from the very moment that, that God said, be created. The moment that he put the planets and put the earth and put the stars, that there is still heat from the very formation. How they got that, I don't know, but I mean, it was in the dictionary and I'm like, wow, I mean, these are people that are probably not safe, but they're saying it and I'm like, I'm getting it. Do you realize that from the very moment that God breathed life into you, that it's still here now in this moment, the very heat, the very passion, the very purposes, the very fire of God is on the inside of you. You might say, I am, I'm burnt out and I am, I am dry, but let me just tell you, there is that fire from the moment you were created. It might not be the entire thing, but it's there, amen? Isn't that good? That's good, that's good. That's a high five right there. I'm telling you what, I, I was getting all excited when I was telling my husband that and he's just looking at me funny. I'm like, I'm, I'm so good. It's so awesome. Okay. Number two, we better move on. So number one is the core is the? Okay. Let's work. Let's learn from the last one. Let's really be excited about this one. Okay. Ready? Number two, the core is? Gosh, you guys are so fun. I just want to do it one more time. For those that are very dramatic, I'm already seeing who could be in a play out in here. Ready? Uh, number two, the core is? Wow, you guys are amazing. I love you. Okay, so here we see the core, right? The core of an apple. The definition is the central part of a fruit is another definition of the core. You don't see the core. You don't see the seeds. It's the unseen part. But what lies on the inside is the very potential of multiplication. 
See, in God, it's those unseen places that, that hold the key to multiplication and success and breakthrough and revelation. See, on the outside, we might seemingly have it all together, but on the very unseen places and the deep places of who you are, lay the seeds of life, the seeds that Jesus put on the inside of you. The unseen See, in Galatians 3.29, it says, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. How amazing is that, that we are still partaking in the promise of Abraham, the very seed that was put inside of him, the very faith that, that caused him to leave his place of where he lived to launch out is inside of us. What are the unseen seeds that lay on the inside of you? What are the unseen places that no one else sees but God sees that are deep down in your core? But number three, not only is the core our center and the core is unseen, but number three, the core is our strength. The core is our strength. See, when you're talking about the body, the muscles of the torso, especially the lower back and abdominal area, which assists to the maintenance of good posture and balance. Going back to my story in college, when I hurt my back, I came back for Christmas to visit, and I'm in pain almost all the time, and I get home and I literally become bedridden. I'm 18 years old. High school, I was in every sport, I was very athletic, and then I go to college and I do some Tai Bo and I hurt my back and I'm like hurting, okay? Like, don't do Tai Bo, it's crazy, all right? I don't know what I did, I must have kicked a crazy kick and it just threw my back for a loop. But from that, I had to leave college. They told me, if you want an MRI, you have to stay because the only opening is like in mid-semester. I had all my things back at college. I had just left Maui. I was not going to come back. I mean, like, come on. I was like, how is that going to look? I'm going to look like I'm a failure. I mean, you know how we all are and stuff like that. And then I was like, there's no way I'm going to Maui Community College. Okay, see, back then it was like a bad word. Now it's like tied to UH and it's okay. It's really good. But back then it was a dirty word and I wasn't going to do it, right? I was like, I'm, I'm, I mean college in California, you know, like I'm independent and I had to be home. I had to leave everything and have my roommate ship it and I was in bed in pain and I felt like I was 80 years old and I was hurting and I had to do physical therapy and I had to do all these things and all I could do was walk up in Kula where I live. And one thing I learned is how important strengthening my core was how I had to do exercises and stretches and strengthening things to get my core because everything with my core was attached to everything else, a part of my body. And when that was not strengthened, I was off balance. Anybody been there before when your back is a little tweaked and you're like, you feel like your whole, and then it affects what? Your entire body. When your core is not strong, listen to me now, when your core is not strong, it affects the rest of your life. So the core is the strength. Number four, the core is magnetic. And I'm not going to go into all the details because I don't know. And so if I'm totally saying this wrong out there and you guys are like engineers or do something amazing, but I'm just going to kind of read it. But they talk about the magnetic core and electricity. It says the piece of iron, bundles of iron wires that come together forming a central inner portion and of coils and transformers. And they talk about this magnetic core. And I began to start thinking, I was like, my word, this is amazing. That God has called us to be magnetic. That God has called us to attract. And another definition is very attractive or alluring. So in this, in all these four areas, these are just basic things that are, that, are, that are just about the core. But I want to tie it in to how Jesus really has to be our core. 
And if we're gonna move forward in this series, it really starts with the individual. Because we're not just about a, a point system, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you follow these, this is how it goes. It all starts and stops with our relationship with Jesus. But if our core in Jesus is strong, let me tell you, if you begin to apply these other things that we're gonna begin to talk about, things are gonna change. You're gonna see your life literally transform if you grab a hold of them. So when we talk about Jesus as our core, think about Jesus has to be the center place of your life. Let me ask you a few questions. Is Jesus at the center of everything you do? What are the things that are taking place, taking the place of God in our lives? Let me say that one, one more time. What are the things that are taking the place of God in our lives? I want to read for, with you from Galatians. It says, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach is not of human origin. This is Paul speaking. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you guys out there. It's very easy to make Christianity just a religion and not a relationship. You have to cry out and ask for a revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul here is talking about how he, he, he's like, you knew who I was. He goes, I was a, Jew, a, a Christian killer. I was the most dedicated of Jews. I, I followed it more than others. And I was even young for my age, but I was surpassing the other, others older than my age. This is what he's talking about. And he's saying, listen, it didn't come from human origin or human reasoning. It came from a revelation of Jesus Christ. When Jesus showed up on the scene to the road to Damascus, he had an encounter that transformed his life that made Jesus the center. Right. Have you had one of those moments? Because it's in those moments that he becomes your core. He becomes your all. But not only is Jesus our center, but when I said co the core is unseen, it's talking about faith. What does it say in Hebrews? It says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for is the evidence of things we cannot see. This is Hebrews 11.1. 1. Through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the universe, the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Everything we see now was not in existence and yet God spoke it into existence. And everything that we want to see, if we want to go to the next level, we want to go, go farther in God, deeper in God, we want to see all those things. It's going to take faith. It's going to take you going beyond this and going to a place where you trust him and you step out and do something about it. I'm kind of sick about just hearing about it. I want to do it. Amen? I don't want just information. I want activation. That's what I want for Impact 7. I don't want you coming just getting information. Because information doesn't change anything. I want information to give you transformation that it gives you activation into your community. But not only does Jesus need to be our center, and this is where we got to start, and do we need to begin to stir up the faith inside of us to launch out to the places that are unseen, not only outwardly, but deep inside our lives, deal with the unseen places that need healing and transformation. But we also, number three, need Jesus to be our strength. See, we, we, we flippantly say Philippians 4.13, you know, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. How many of you have ever said that verse before? But when it comes down to it, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't do it. You know, we're having our, our freak out moments, our, our, our throw in the towel moments. But, you know, truly, if we're going to move forward, we've got to allow him to be our strength in our weakness. You can't be afraid of weakness. Weakness draws you to the feet of Jesus. Humility keeps you at a low place so that he is exalted. But number four, Jesus was magnetic. Think about his life. Think about everywhere he went, people were around him. People tried to touch him. The woman with the issue of blood, Zacchaeus climbing up on the tree. There's people that crowded around him so much that he had to get in a boat and preach from the boat. I don't know about you. I, I, but I want to be magnetic. 
I want to be somebody that's not drawn to Shannon, but drawn to the Jesus inside of me, that's drawn to the life, that's drawn to the hope, that's drawn to the encouragement that says, why can you keep smiling? Why are you so nice? What is it about you? There's something, I, I mean, I've had that happen to me before in restaurants where I've just said something really encouraging and then later on, I start ministering to somebody and then they start opening up and weeping. And I, I, I mean, I was with my sister one time in Sacramento and we're, we're having a little sister date and I'm out there and the Holy Spirit speaks to me about this waitress. And I just straight up was like, are you going through some family things? And she just started almost breaking down and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm at work. I can't do this. And I got to pray with her at that moment. She was in a desperate place and God used me to be magnetic in the sense to, to draw. And what is ma and magnetism? It draws things close. And so we got to remember this though, as we launch out in, as, as Impact 7, we cannot draw people to ourselves, but as they're drawn to us and the Jesus in us, we draw them to Jesus.